Hello, my friend, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's giant journal flip through video. I call this piece the Jason Journal. That's been its working title from the moment I started on it um, up till today. And although I tried to think of a catchy, clever, punny kind of a name, it is the Jason Journal. I made this piece as a gift of love, admiration, and appreciation for the one and only Jason Adams. His YouTube channel is like a treasure trove of fascinating information about fine jewelry, jewelry art, various collectible jewelry movements, um, art history, history of objects in general, especially sentimental wearable objects, things like talismans, rosaries, personal, you know, reliquaries, the kinds of things one might keep a locket, uh, sorry, a lock of a loved one's hair, especially if that loved one is a puppy or a kitty, um, etc. Anyway, if you're here, it's, it's likely that you already know who Jason is, and I might just be babbling as I tend to do in a video intro. But anyway, yeah, this piece is for him. So the very first video of Jason's that I ever saw, he shared a stunning piece of jewelry that, I mean, it looked like something ancient and also like something ultra mod as in 1960s mod. Um, and I, I was so captivated by it that I watched just because I, I think I saw it in the thumbnail or something. And the piece was an Egyptian scarab pendant, but made in shades of like turquoisey blue and bubblegum pink. And Jason mentioned that it was one of his own works. And that's when I was hooked. In that same video, he shared a beautiful handbag that was made to look like his belated, beloved dog, Zito. Oh, and the way that he had, you know, unself-centered tears of gratitude and mourning and, you know, joy, joy to find a, a gorgeous creative work made just for him, along with, you know, the, the sorrow of being without such a beloved friend. I think the loss of pets to me is the greatest grief I've ever known and I have lost people also. Um, but even the people with whom we are the closest, we don't cuddle them to sleep every single night, you know, let them see us at our best and also worst and feel that they love us just as much when we're at our worst. You know, there's something about animals that is so pure and so sacred and so um, for lack of a better word, deep, that I think a lot of people don't get. Um, I'm an animal lover, obviously, and that is what made me fall in love with Jason. He has mentioned that the, I, I don't even want to put a guesstimate as to the value, but the priceless collection that he has, he's going to leave all of it to animal rescue and what better reason to make somebody a piece of art than knowing that his entire collection is going towards making the world a better place for our furry friends. So Jason, surprise! <laughs> Tanya was my co-conspirator. You can blame her for giving away your address to a stranger on the internet who sent you this thing. Um, and anyway, at that, I am ready to start sharing with you what I've put in his book. So because the first piece of jewelry he made that, that I came to love was an Egyptian scarab, I wanted to pay homage to Egypt on the cover, but in an unconventional, quirky kind of a way. And so I've made King Tut, and I have given him the full boho art journal treatment, <laughs> complete with... Um, complete with the kind of tassels that you'd see hanging from curtains all the way to, you know, black fringe and a little pair of best friends, a dog for Jason, a cat for me. I'm totally a cat lover. Um, the back I kept very, very simple. I just used this really fun starburst sort of a textural wallpaper sample. I wanted to include 
his favorite color, orange, but in a in a way that it kind of peeks through from the pages rather than being too obviously uh, wrapped around the entire cover. And so that's why I put this big thing at the back. We'll get to that later. But yeah, I just had fun doing it and overdoing it. <laughs> Sorry trim to hide where the signature is sewn in. Oh, and what is peeking under the fringe there? Let's just see. So yeah, I put this safety pin here with an extra little flower that I fussy cut from a beautiful piece of trim that was given to me by Tanya. I wanted to use a lot of her things in Jason's journal just to honor their beautiful friendship. So yeah, this sheer overlay flips up, voila, to reveal the picture of King Tut in its pure form. This came right out of an art history textbook that I have two copies of. Um, I wanted it to look beautiful from every side, and I wanted this to be kind of like a double cover option so he could also put it on the side of this stunning 17th century French woman. And now the book has a completely different vibe, doesn't it? So yeah, it can either be a Tut cover or a Mademoiselle cover. These are both pockets, so he could tuck something into there too for safekeeping. But just as the real life King Tut is famous for his treasure, so too does this beautiful Egyptian funerary mask hide a treasure. <laughs> I was so inspired by Jason's collector aesthetic, you know, the way he takes us to the light box in his videos and shows us wonderful treasures like stick pins and other such baubles and vintage plastics that I hope this is. It could just be, you know, some modern replica. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to make Jason's journal a collection in the form of a book. So it was inspired by everything from the cabinets of curiosities that I still would like to do a journal about one day, perhaps. <laughs> inspired by that, inspired by the pet fur covered velvet mats in his videos, I meticulously placed every strand of cat hair on this background to make it look as authentically Jason as possible. No, I effing didn't. <laughs> I try, I brushed it. I tried to keep it clean and cat hair happens. I know Jason will understand and forgive that. But anyway, um, funny thing that my boyfriend Ken Lee said when I showed him Jason's journal cover, uh, he said the best thing about it is that Jason can take off all of this junk and put real jewelry in its place. So there you go. Out of the words of the out of the mouth of the love of my life. Um, but it's it's true. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. This is all stuff that I found thrifting, um, that I've saved to put into journals and that I felt deserved to be at home in Jason. So I have, let's see, three vintage stick pins. I don't think any of these are anything too priceless, and that's why I felt comfortable sticking them down on a journal cover. But just, you know, four-leaf clover for good luck, a classic bow, a star, because Jason is a star and he wears stars, and so do I. Sun, moon, stars are my favorite, favorite types of jewelry, so I tried to represent that. Hearts for love, this beautiful, tiny, tiny little orange enamel butterfly to, as kind of an ode to Jason's insect jewelry collection. This big bracelet, just because I know he loves the color orange. Um, I would have loved to put some Bakelite on here, but my Auntie Mary Lynn also collects Bakelite, so if I find that out in the wild, um, I've always given it straight to her. Um, but anyway, I think, I think this is just a fun cover. Everything is pinned on and can be, you know, taken off, moved around. I think the tiny little ones are glued on, but the other stuff is all removable. Um, this pin I thought was so sweet because it has... A pet portrait and then an angel doggy because I do believe our beloved pets you know remain around in an energetic form to be with us to bless us to you know um, remind us that we're not alone in life just my personal belief 
pretty little carved rose. You get the idea. This is rose quartz. I always like to include a little bit of natural gemstone energy in the books that I make. And, you know, for somebody who embodies love like Jason, or who embodies <laughs> feistiness, I don't know. I say he embodies love. What does that mean? I think he does. I think his love for animals shines through. I think his love for art shines through. His love for quality craftsmanship shines through. His love for, um, you know, for history, for education, for ornamentation, for beauty, for creativity. That's the kind of love. Uh, not the cheesy hallmark, you know, oh, he's pure love. No, I think he's probably equal parts love and, um, and humor and fun. But anyway, going inside, you can see the influence or the inspiration is his favorite color of orange. I tried to load his journal up with just all kinds of things that... I, that I love um, that remind me of him and of his collections and from time to time he's mentioned things in videos since I started working on his book that have kind of struck a chord with me and that I've thought okay that has to go into his journal and then other times as you'll see there were things that I found that I picked up sometimes knowing they were for him more magically sometimes not knowing that they were going to be for him that made their way into this book. So anyway, the lining material is some beautiful thrifted orange fabric. This beautiful orange velvet pocket is some sari trim from my collection. And then this pretty embroidered piece, Jason mentioned once that he loves all things Japanese, so that had to get worked in somehow. And then I've found a really cool book about world religions and this Buddhist girl with tears of devotion wearing such stunning, stunning ornaments and holding a beautiful orange fan. I just felt like this is the kind of image that it speaks to me. I absolutely love um, meditation. I love faith. I love God by whatever name you choose to call God. And since Jason has opened up that he, his personal belief system is Buddhism and also Catholicism. I've tried to represent both in here, along with some ancient Egypt just for fun. I put this little piece in, ignore the dick. Um, I mean the word, if, if you're listening and not watching, you're going to be like, oh no, what did she put in there? Uh, I pulled this stamp. Oh, I didn't notice that last name actually. Whatever. It's there. It's funny. Um, I picked this out because Jason mentioned having recently turned 50 and doing the math, I'm going to be turning 40 later this year. I was born in 84, so it was easy to deduce. He was born in 74, and so I thought it was kind of cool that this angel stamp with stunning orange wings uh, was actually from what looks to be a Christmas card from the year he was born. So that's just kind of cool, I think. Um, I took some pages out of a really lovely book that I've thrifted about Versailles and felt like Jason deserves a ballroom to hang out in. Isn't that fun? I don't know about you, but for me, you know, books that show, you know, touristy places and just nice things to discover, museums, architecture collections. Love this paper. I tried to find, by the way, as many orange stamps as possible and as many dog-themed stamps as possible to stick into here um, with things like pottery collections and what look to be jewelry pieces. I tried to find a few. Here we have artist signature to go with the book and I just folded this. It was the title page from a book. And you can see the picture on the other side from the art history book that I pulled this out of. But I just wanted this part here, Royal Collectors, because I believe that as far as collectors go, Jason is of the royal variety. Um, 
adorable. He's mentioned collecting pet portraits, so I found a very cute picture of mother and puppy just as a postcard. And of course, all the blank parts here would be perfect for him to journal on if he chooses to actually write in this journal. But yeah, I feel like books that show us really cool places, I had started to say, really do take us there. Like if you spend a moment gazing into a historic photograph like this one, um, I don't know the date that it's from. Somebody wrote, I think, Ghent, Belgium, on it. Um, so they've written what the pictures are of, but they haven't dated them. I found these in just a bunch of vintage postcards that I bought at a thrift shop. One of my all-time favorite postage stamps. I put this in a lot of journals. It's just a fairy tale castle French stamp. Uh, Mother Mary with the baby and some of the coolest wrapping paper I've ever had. So yeah, I just put a stack of fun little vintage pages in the beginning. Since I do love making smaller books too, I've collected lots of little papers. But anyway, next to this gorgeous, ah, what would that be? Like a pitcher or like a, it looks like a salad dressing vinegar thing. I won't try to guess what the stuff is. I just put it in because it's pretty. Um, my artist friend Kat Stone had asked me if I planned to write journal prompts on the blank pages so that Jason can actually write in this journal and instead of this being a finished piece that I've made for him, that makes it a collaborative piece and a work in progress and a living art, not, not something that I've created and now it's created, but something that I've started and now he can complete. So. If he wants to, he can write on these pages, but I also think it's kind of cool just seeing them as journal prompts and things to think about. So yeah, he you could write on this, Jason. You don't have to. I didn't mean to make you a big book of tasks that must be completed or a big thing of homework. Um, funny story, <laughs> one year for Christmas, one of my uncles gave my granddad one of those books that's like, you know, a father's fondest memories or like words to remember me by. One of those, one of those tactless, in my opinion. No offense to the uncle who bought it, which whatever, my uncles don't watch my videos so I can talk all I like. Um, I, I think they're tactless because people typically give them to the elderly and that's a way of kind of implying like, you know, <laughs> we, we've never asked you about your life. So here, write it down if you think we should know about it one day when you're gone um so anyway my granddad had kind of gone through and grudgingly written in answers to some things like one of them said how do you feel passing on your wisdom in the form of this book and he wrote something along the lines of well you know if people wanted to hear my wisdom they would just come come ask me <laughs> you know something like that um so he didn't answer every single question in the book. And some of them, his, his answers were hilarious and really do. You know, you can hear his voice when you read them. And so anyway, Jason, I'm not giving this to you the way a grandkid would give a grandfather a book as, you know, a chore that kind of has a, a weird message behind it. It's more just these are things that I'm feeling like... Um, the, the way Kat worded it is that, you know, one day when you're leaving your collection behind, um, it's, it's rare that a person owns a piece of art that can not only, you know, have a hand of the maker in it, but also be something of a time capsule of their own self and their own life and their own story and their own artistic goals and memories and such. And so I've tried to put into it journal prompts that Jason can choose to use or choose to ignore however he, he sees fit. Um, that, you know, one day could be a fountain of wisdom for maybe a gallery go goer. If I'm maybe so bold and presumptuous as to believe that this could make its way into a gallery one day. Or maybe just, you know, as a, as a wonderful message from a previous 
creator to like some future owner who might privately buy this or receive it. I, I tend to think of ourselves not as the owners of our things, but as the temporary custodians of our things. Um, you know, this, both of the rings I'm wearing, I bought, you know, from antique dealers. And so I know darn well, I'm not the first person who wore them. My friend may had this custom made just for me, but I know I'm not going to be the last person to wear it. And similar, similarly with our journals, assuming we don't burn them <laughs> when we go, one day somebody else is going to flip through the pages. I think that's kind of just a fun thing to think about. And I think Jason is the same type. You know, he, I think all, all great art and jewelry collectors consider their legacy uh, just as much as they consider their personal, you know, possessions. We know we do not belong to ourselves permanently. Like this flesh and blood body will not be mine forever. My consciousness will move on and this body will no longer exist. Same way. Anyway, you didn't come here for pontification. You came here probably to look at pretty pictures and papers. So let's on with it. And this cute little British stamp, just because she's wearing an orange dress and orange is her Jason's favorite color. Um, I asked the question, what is your latest favorite discovery? And then this cute little Victorian, genuine Victorian from the 1800s calling card from a fond heart, faithful and true. And I love using stamps as tuck spots. This is a Sears wallpaper sample from 1928 and absolutely gorgeous an antique Asian page. I'm not sure the year the book was from, but I did find that at an antique store. It just has a cool yellowing uh, vintage French playbook page. More of those cool stamps. This flips down just for fun. And it's Archangel Michael out of an art history textbook. I've picked pages that show cool objects, as you can see. This fun sticker showing a beautiful bejeweled woman is the art of my friend Kat Stone. And I've asked Jason if he would have advice for any new artists. This beautiful, beautiful church. Saint Etienne. Imagine the year 1068. They didn't have the modern conveniences that we have now, but that's the kind of architecture they were building. Another room in Versailles to explore. Lots of orange stamps tucked in here just for fun in that orange heart trim. That could be written on too. <laughs> I think the other fun thing about junk journals is that they're so full of surprise places to write. This adorable kid with a little I don't know my dog breeds. I would call that a pug. I could be wrong. It's just cute. This is also a genuine uh, Victorian card from the 1870s or the 1880s. This pocket page has just a pretty uh, statuary from the outside of a European church. And then another beautiful page showing the Madonna and child. I picked this one just because as a, as a jewelry historian, I'm sure Jason, like me, goes straight to the jewelry when he looks at old portraits. And so I was just fascinated by kind of the Botticelli style hair that the Madonna has here and also that little, you know, golden coronet. And my terminology might not be accurate. It's just the pretty thing on her head. And I thought that was a cool looking object too. So yeah, I've just tucked lots of things into the pages. I put lots of quirky little things like this little orange because it's his favorite color, but hey, why not also an apple? Pages from a crystal book, orange to match the citrine here. And I've asked if there are any crystals that he wears for spiritual reasons. Okay, so this is funny. I found this adorable painting, print of a painting, obviously done in autumn of 2022 by Cat Stone. And I just love 
the layers and layers and layers of beads on this woman who clearly has cropped out a topsy-turvy fruit basket hat. And also look at her bangles, just too good. So I kind of extended her into stickers that go up here in the shape of that kind of fruit hat. And Jason has referred to her, shoot, I'm, it's on the tip of my tongue. What's she called? Carmen Miranda, I think. Um, I could, I could be wrong. I'm sure somebody will correct me because I'm sure I'm wrong, but he tends to say too much is just about enough. And so there we go. I put too much little fruit stickers. And then of course, from my Victorian scrapbook, when I found a little snippet of paper of a lady making a fruit salad that says fruit time, it just had to go <laughs> with the fruit hat. So speaking of the fruit hat, this cool vintage strip of paper trim is in honor of Jason's um, vegetable necklace. <laughs> so he has that really, really cool giant vegetable necklace. I've seen him wear it in a couple different videos. I wish I had bake light veggies. I could have dangled off the sides of the pages or something, but here we go. I think that might even be contemporary to the era uh, when that necklace was made. Maybe not. Wouldn't that be sweet though? So my mom saves me copies of magazines and catalogs that she thinks have pictures in them that could go well in journals, and that's what I cut this out of. And it shows what look like Pennsylvania Dutch kind of women hanging their handmade quilts. Look at how talented they are. And that reminded me, of course, of Jason's quilt collection. And so I made him a sampler of quilt wrapping paper samples. Believe it or not, this messy little waterfall sampler was the nitpickiest, most difficult thing that I put together to go into this book. <laughs> so there, don't ask for one if you order a custom journal. I don't wanna do it again, <laughs> but I hope Jason likes it. And this could be a fun place to do secret journaling, writing on the backs of these. And then he's also got the space on the backs of all of these. Or he could throw this into recycling and put something else in that tuck spot. But knowing, knowing Jason, he wouldn't do that. I don't think many people would with, a, with an art book like this or an art journal like this. But again, it's a, it's a living book. So just like my boyfriend had said, he can take all the jewelry pieces off the front and replace it with real stuff. He can do that with anything in any of these pockets. This uh, Toy Soldier page is only here because on the other side, there was something that I wanted in the book. And so Jason could choose to keep this if he wants to, or he could, for example, paint gesso over it and use it for more writing space. It could be a backdrop for collage. Um, lots could be done with it. Put a little stamp of India there just because the colors kind of match. And I do love India as a birthplace, mother civilization of the Vedic tradition that gave birth to Buddhism and, and um, also just aesthetically, I love Indian textiles and sari fabrics and things. So this beautiful page was coffee dyed by my friend May in Saudi Arabia. More cool stamps, some just because they look cool. <laughs> this one because it has the orange in it. This beautiful woman at first, I thought she was Queen Victoria before I read the caption. Doesn't she have that similar stature? But yeah, her bracelet, so cool. That fan in the background, this urn, so fun. I just felt like, oh, you know, <laughs> if we could pick off the pieces of her outfit, I would make books out of her dress fabric and put this on my wall. I could see this in Jason's storage space. Maybe it would make the move with him. <laughs> Anyhow, so on this page that came out of an Egyptology book, if you had to live in an ancient civilization, which one would it be? A couple little Queen Elizabeth stamps, just because they're pretty. This cool looking object. 
Uh, Jason has mentioned collecting folk art, and so a couple of stamps showcasing folk art from around the world, including the embroidered folk art in India. This is an antique music page. I stuck a kangaroo stick pin on it just because, why not? Canadian orange pin, oh, sorry, orange stamp. A page of men's rings and watches out of a 1970 something, I forget, 1970 something catalog that I found thrifting. This is a sampler of some of my favorite embroidered sari trims. I love putting samplers in books like this, especially on heavy vintage ledger. And so here I asked him a question. His, what is his first memory of jewelry, first memory of fashion, first memory of art, <laughs> if you remember? I love putting vintage postage stamps in the journals that I make. And since Jason mentioned being born in the year of the tiger, or maybe he didn't, maybe I did the math and figured out that 74 was the year of the tiger. Either way, I thought these tiger stamps were cool. And this sheet of stamps from 1976 was kind of like an instant collection. So I like keeping it together. Every time I make a journal, I include a bluebird of happiness. And so here is the bluebird of happiness for this one. And this is also kind of a cute little bluebird, but my favorite stamp of these is the woman here playing the flute. She's like a bodhisattva, so pretty. This cute dog was on the cover of a sketchbook. And then this heart charm has a little doggy paw in it, a paw print, super, super cute. So yeah, journaling space. If you could tell the story of your love, what are the most important moments? And that can be his love story with Jeremy, or it could be his love story with dogs, <laughs> or a dog, or all the dogs. So here I made a little pocket. Whoops. This must have gone in when the glue is still a little wet. I'm so sorry, Jason. This thing might be stuck. No, I'll wriggle it out. Better that I rip it and re-glue it so that it's done in studio <laughs> than that I leave it. Luckily, it didn't even rip. It was just a little stuck but a beautiful Japanese stamp from 1962. Uh, this one I think is from 63, but really cool. They've never been canceled. So stamp collectors are into these. And no, Jason, I am not trying to turn you into a stamp collector. I just thought they were pretty things to put in here. And of course the back of this is good journal space. Here is some good journal space. Uh, this little character is a Japanese money turtle. And they believe in Japan that keeping a little golden turtle, not real gold, I wish it was, um, keeping a little golden turtle like this in your wallet attracts prosperity. So speaking of Japanese, these pages are out of a Kwan Yin temple guidebook that I have from the late Edo period. So these are three pages of genuine late Edo period woodblock printed paper. Normally I would put just one of these in somebody's journal, but since it's Jason and since this is a collector journal, I wanted to give him a collection. So three sheets to me. Three sheets might not a collection make, but three is more of a collection than one. And then this little booklet is something that I stitched together inspired by traditional Japanese book binding uh, with prints that I made of the Kuan Yin um, pieces from that book that I've kept for my own collection, but I love to use it as printables. And I've put them in my Etsy shop if anybody watching would like to print your own copy. This beautiful woman is from a postcard that I found thrifting at an antique shop, or I guess you could say antiquing, although it's vintage, not antique, and this is a reproduction. I've inked around the edges to make it look older than it is. Another piece from Japan. I just love, you know, real used pieces of mail from time gone by, an era gone by. I will take a snail mail postcard over an email or a text or a 
Instagram tag any day. It's very fun. So a couple of them were written on. This one's blank, but that's also a genuine vintage postcard. Okay, and then this was in here too. I told my grandmom that I was making a journal for Jason and what was going into it, and I mentioned the fact that he's a collector of rosaries. And before I could even finish my sentence, she was up and in her room, and she came back with this and said to give it to him. So Jason, this is one of my grandmother's rosaries. The one that she uses for her daily prayers is a sterling silver rosary that it's solid sterling, even the beads are sterling, and it was a gift that my granddad gave her uh, when she converted to Catholicism before they were married. And there's a long story to that, but anyway, she said this was one that has been, it has been consecrated and she has used it uh, for prayer. I think it was a travel rosary. So that gets tucked into there just to put some positive grandmotherly prayer energy into the book. Setting this aside for a second to show you how I put a Tibetan Buddhist prayer flag over a reproduction I made of a Catholic reliquary cabinet. So in here, it's magnetic. I've put the backing is a picture from an art history textbook of Jesus. And I had this cute little pocket rosary prayer card that I must have had, I don't know how many years. I, I consider myself spiritual, but not religious, but I was raised in a Roman Catholic family. So I've always had that kind of stuff around. But I felt like putting a little collection of beautiful religious imagery stamps in here. This one might be my favorite. And just because again, beautiful, valuable gold object with ceremonial use. You know, we often don't think about the, the ceremonial, um, culturally relevant, symbolic things to do with the cultures we are born into and raised in. And yet, I see this as being equally fascinating, historical, and rare as the Buddhist images on the reproduction I've made of a lithograph here. So yeah, just some fun Buddhist ceremonial objects. And I took some gold watercolor paint to highlight this one just so that it has shine and dimension and texture. I had fun. I had fun with that. And then I also put this beautiful thing. So Jason had mentioned that in one video, if he could have anything in the world to add to his collection, it would be you know, a genuine Catholic reliquary that has touched a real relic. And so I had to put a picture of one of those into his journal. I really, I did my best to try to catch as many little hints as possible, even though he didn't know that they were hints from his videos. But anyway, that's just fun. And so the day before, here I have a synchronicity story for you. So get your tea, get your coffee. The day before, Jason mentioned being Buddhist and Catholic in a YouTube video. I was at my mom's house. My mom lives about a block away from a thrift store that just happens to have the best jewelry jars in my area. And I don't go as often as I would like to because I live quite far away from it and I don't drive. I'd be there every day if I could. But, you know, some days I just get a feeling that there's something for me there. There's something, there's something. So that day I told my mom, I have to go check out the thrift shop. I have to see if there's a jewelry jar. There was one. I went through it. A couple of the things seemed strange to me, like they were not actually jewelry. And those things were a little miniature Catholic reliquary really cute spinning it would probably be the kind of thing they might sell as like souvenirs at the vatican or 
maybe souvenirs at a cathedral souvenir shop. It's on a magnet, so maybe that would sit on a car dashboard. A miniature rosary, which is so beautiful. I saw this through the jewelry jar before I knew Jason was Catholic or that he collected rosaries, and I thought, I'm going to put this in my journal because it's so pretty. And I do love Mother Mary, and I love the fact that these are little like clear plastic roses. They're just so pretty. Each prayer is said to be a rose to Mother Mary, so that's the symbology there. Strangely, that jar also had a Buddhist coin that looks like it sat in a spinner, not unlike this one here, even though it's a different size. And it also had this little cross on a chain. So anyway, I went through that jewelry jar with my mom and with my grandma that day. And I said, what a weird thing to find in a jewelry jar. What is this? Like a Catholic miniature souvenir uh, reliquary or something? Like, that's odd. And so the next day when I was watching Jason and Tanya's live video, and he said he would love to have a real Catholic reliquary, I thought, oh my goodness. And when he said he's both Catholic and Buddhist and not everybody gets that, I knew God, the universe, Buddha, divinity, consciousness, whatever word you might put to it. I just knew that I was meant to find these things to put into Jason's journal. Because to me, that is a sign unquestionably that he is on his right path, that he's doing what he's meant to be doing, that he is supported, that he is loved, that his prayers are heard, whatever else you want to put to it. Call me superstitious or call me, um, oh, pro noyic <laughs> You know, the opposite of paranoia is pro noia where we believe that things are conspiring in our favor, not against us. I feel like, you know, Jason has talked about walking into thrift stores and finding platinum and diamond rings, like things out of our wildest dreams. I feel like this is a humble offering compared to some of the treasures he has scored in thrift shops. But to me, these moments of synchronicity where we find confirmation about something that means something to us, or we find seemingly at odds things together, the symbols of very, very different religions, Buddhist and Catholic, but they were together in the same jewelry jar at the time when I was collecting materials for this journal. And to me, that's just divine. So there. This beautiful little beaded piece looks so much like the things that we see hanging on pillars in Catholic churches. And that was in my Tanya gift box and then this piece here is a low is it looks I can't remember whether this was in Tanya's gift box I don't think it was I think this was a local find um but either way it's it's native or first nations style beadwork that I think is just so so pretty some of my favorite orange colored fabric oops from May because this book was made in the year of the dragon, I had to have a nod to dragons. So this flips up, revealing a beautiful mass scene in a church. And then I have a really cool 1950s plumbing installation receipt book that my friend Angelica sent me that is from Sorry, it's from Vienna, Austria. And I went through that whole book thinking there's got to be one in here that just screams Jason. And I picked this one just because it said St. Michael in, in big letters. And I thought, okay, <laughs> I'll take it. A book to, you know, a Catholic man. And then this is a print of a genuine antique Lourdes postcard that's in my own collection. I absolutely love St. Bernadette and the story of Bernadette and just the beauty of this antique postcard art. So I printed it this way and on one side I wrote, uh, what's, who's his favorite bodhisattva if he has one? And who is his patron saint if he has one? And if you're wondering for the record, my favorite bodhisattva <laughs> would be Kuan Yin and my favorite saint and the saint who, you know, when I was confirmed, 
Ugh. Long story there. I no longer, you know. The, the saint I chose was St. Francis of Assisi, <laughs> patron saint of vegetarians. I went vegetarian when I was seven or eight years old, and when I found out St. Francis of Assisi was vegetarian, I chose him to be my, my namesake when I was confirmed. Um, the secretaries of the church did not find it suitable for a girl to pick a boy's name, and so they changed it to Francis with an E, and thus took away the connection to St. Francis of Assisi and told me that I had to learn about some female St. Francis instead, and that was one of the things that made me kind of start questioning the whole thing. Anyway, another stunning piece of Sears 1928 wallpaper sample. It's crumbling. It's old. It'll rip. Don't worry. I'm saying that to myself as much as to Jason. I felt like sending him the coveted Borders sampler pages that are from that same little booklet, as well as this stunning back page with their guarantee for their house paint. Isn't that cool? 1928 and the colors are still bright. So almost antique paper. And I put it here just because uh, the green is so beautiful with this metallic sort of plasticized paper. This clock was out of my book about Versailles. So I feel like if Jason were to have a grandfather clock, he should have one that belonged to a literal king. And then the signature came, this paper is from the 1600s. This is genuine. This is not a print. This is real paper from the 1600s. Uh, it was not any kind of historical fancy document. I bought it from an Etsy shop that literally rips pages out of old uh, ledgers and sells them by the page. Um, so don't feel like I've defaced some priceless thing here. I just think it's cool to hold things that were written on in the time of historical events. And this being French from the 17th century, I felt like the pocket it should sit in, of course, should be a French 17th century clock. This is just paper from an old account book. Here's a print I made on some tracing paper of that French document before I ripped it into pieces, just for historic sake, history's sake. Just a cool picture of a pendant out of an art history book that looks jewelry, well, that is jewelry. Another art history book page of a cameo. I know Jason loves cameos. And just look at this gorgeous one. Butterfly, because of his insect collection. Okay, now this is funny. So I have a collection of vintage, kind of torn up, colored in, pages missing kids books that I love to add to junk journals. Um, just simply because they're they're vibrant, they're fun to look at, they're whimsical, they're quirky. I picked these two out for Jason because of his love for animals and the men are playing with this little bunny in a very cute way. It just looked whimsical and fun and pretty. So yeah, I, I just love these two little guys, a little butterfly on his nose. Uh, and then I saw, and then I, I so after I putting it aside with the things for Jason's journal, I read it and it says, when they get up, Pim and Palm wash themselves, brush their teeth and dress themselves. What gay clothes they wear. When they are quite ready, they comb their long beards. And so it's showing them in their gay clothes, combing their beards. And then I thought like, oh shoot. Like, does this, does this sound like a joke? Like <laughs> I'm not putting it in here because it says like, could it have said anything else other than what gay clothes they wear? Now, of course, historically, this book from the 50s or the 60s was using the word in its original meaning, which is happy. What happy, vibrant, you know, colorful clothes they wear. Um, so, yeah, it has nothing to do with their orientation. But then I realized, you know, Pim and Palm live together get dressed together <laughs> you know maybe they are a couple anyway there's they're super cute so yeah I, I hope 
I hope that does fit within Jason's sense of humor too. My boyfriend can leave up. Like I said, should I still use it? Should I email Tanya and ask her? Does she think Jason would be would be offended by something like that? I don't think he would be. My boyfriend said, oh, come on. He'll find it ridiculous and hilarious. Put it in. So on Ken Lee's best advice, there it is. <laughs> I've asked Jason what's on his current playlist. Thus turning this book into something of a time capsule. Uh, favorite books. I've already added letters to a young poet to my must read list because Jason has talked about it but I thought maybe he'll want to put that in words maybe write about some of the other books he likes too I forgot to point out on the page with the Catholic and the Buddhist things I found just such a cute vibrant enameled butterfly brooch with lots of orange so that's there I can't fit sorry I keep knocking little bits down but don't worry they're they're unrelated to this okay now these are pugs I don't know what that previous dog was these are pugs another genuine piece of Victorian ephemera so so adorable and look at the symbol they designed for the sewing machine doesn't it look like that Harry Potter snitch I just noticed that now anyway Very cool. So yeah, genuine Victorian Colleen card. I was just pausing to read that. So you know how they say in life, everyone has that one that got away. I'm asking Jason if he had any auction items that got away. You know, something he bid on, but the price went too steep that he wishes he had. Or is there anything? I'd be curious. And I'm sure others would be too. And maybe you've already answered that, Jason. If so, I'm sorry. On this page, I wrote, if you find a genie in an antique lamp, what would you wish for? And I've added this beautiful paper doll from my friend Kat Stone. She painted it herself. This is a magnet that holds onto the page uh, along with what's on the other side that has the other magnet. But anyway, isn't this so fun? Look at this girl with her 80s tights and her beautiful, beautiful shoes. Oh, so fashionable, so cool. So the story is this paper doll, unassuming, humble, fashionable, but modest in her way, paper doll, is minding her own business, traveling through this journal, admiring the collection when she stumbles upon a paper doll version of a genie lamp and powered by her love of dogs she picks up the lamp and rubs it and she notices I'm so sorry I'm trying to turn this is this is cringe isn't it I'll do a separate video with the story anyway th uh, there's a story to it look at this clip on earring that I've held it on with. So cute, right? I made this lamp out of paper, just old, um, not old, new wallpaper sample that I've painted over in layers of um, metallic paint, silver and gold fabric paint to make it look poofy and textured and 3D'd. And then I added some watered down turquoise colored paint to make it look like a verdigris. So as if this was like, say, a copper vessel that's been gilded and silvered. And then into the wet paint, I stuck natural turquoise, a real little opal that's right there. I don't think the light is quite right today to catch it, but it does have some fiery flashes. These are spessartine garnet so that's some real little garnet and this right here is a real little peridot so we have jason's and jeremy's birthstones some fire opal just for fun some turquoise just for fun but i realized after hey that's my birthstone so i'm represented too haha <laughs> and so are you if your birthstone is opal anyway the idea is the paper doll finds this really really beautiful bottle rubs it and her love for dogs awakens out of it the genie and the genie is jason <laughs> and he's a paper doll 
And his constant companion is the magical Zito, who sticks to him by magnet, both here uh, and at his, well, he doesn't need feet because he's a genie. So anyway, the, the puff of smoke that the genie comes out of when the bottle is activated, it's a puff of smoke and gummy bears because Jason loves gummy bears. Smoke and gelatin-free vegetarian gummy bears, <laughs> like these little ones found in a jewelry jar. Um, so yeah, for the Jason doll, so Jason commented on the, the book I made for my boyfriend, Ken Lee, that he loved it. And I was so, so glad because I made a Jason doll at the same time as I made the Ken Lee doll. Um, and the little Zito companion, yeah, Tanya sent me the photo of Zito that I turned into this. So thank you, Tanya. Um, there's magnets between the layers of, of paper and wallpaper and then I gilded the edges just to kind of hide the magnets as best I could but yeah for Jason's what I did was I I took a screenshot of his uh YouTube profile picture and then just enlarged it and of course it was super super blurry and hard to tell quite what he was wearing so I used my best guess and my pencil crayons and I just kind of colored over a printout of his profile picture. So it may not be a photorealistic likeness, but I think it's fun and quirky. And I put magnets here, here, and here so he can use magnetic jewelry um, for his jewelry. One there too, so he can put one on as like a turban ornament. And I was going to draw feet onto him before I had the idea to turn him into a genie, but when I printed out his profile picture before coloring it, it was right next to a printout that I had made of a genie bottle for a completely different project, mind you. And when I saw the two together, I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, as Jennifer Coolidge's character would say on New Girl, or no, wait. Is that what that show was? No. Two Broke Girls. Anyway, I just said, wait a minute. <laughs> he doesn't need feet because he's a genie. So the previous page, I asked what would he wish for if he found a genie. And then on this page, he becomes the genie. So our humble paper doll right here finds Jason the genie and makes a wish and voila and this is what he turns her into or actually this is where he transports her so now suddenly she is on a beautiful beach that i designed digitally um wearing this lavish flowing dress that cat stone made and of course i've decorated her with fabrics and things but as soon as her wish is made jason is already thinking Who's gonna pick up my my bottle next? And it's this girl here. And she wishes to be a dancer. And I've put magnets under the pages so Jason and Zito can both hang out with these girls. Look at how she's just gazing up at him in admiration. But his mind is already wandering to this lady here. Who wishes maybe for a magical closet filled with jewelry or something. Anyway, I just have fun building up these fabric collages to frame these scenes. And I just love the women Cat Stone creates. I only had the idea to make paper dolls after Cat Stone blessed me with some of hers as a gift. And then finally, someone finds the bottle. And instead of making a wish that would be merely selfish, she tells the Jason genie that she herself is also a sorceress and asks him what he would wish for. And so he receives his freedom. And now he too can go explore the book along with his doggy companion. I put a really cute little wiener dog brooch here. It was broken, so it's glued right down, but it's so cute, isn't it? So yeah, Zito has a little companion to play with. Um, Jason has a new friend and newfound freedom, and now he gets to go exploring in the book. Um, I just want to point out that this is the reason why 
I included this page here, or actually, no, sorry, from the beginning of the book. Go figure, this will turn out to be my longest video of all time, right? This page here from Versailles. So look at this, Jason can literally hang out in this historical work of art from Versailles and look fairly right to scale and fairly, you know, uh, lighting wise, color wise, like he's fitting in. So yeah, maybe he needs a whole fleet of paper dolls. I will not be the one to make them. Maybe, <laughs> maybe those can come from elsewhere. But yeah, here he is admiring that beautiful uh, painted ceiling at Versailles. I'm just going to leave this here for a brief accidental intermission. I totally forgot to show the jewelry that goes with the Jason doll. So the last, the last thing that I want to share about the Jason doll, I have not yet made the envelope that these are going to go in, but this is his accessory collection. So I took some pieces of, you know, earrings that were missing their backs that I found in junk jewelry jars and created a little line. So we've got a turban feather. Doesn't this look like a Maharaja would have worn it? The gem setting style is different, but it's it's close. It can be like, um, I meant for this to be something that could hold a belt buckle, but the magnet is going the other way since it holds him to the page. But anyway, it also hides his lack of feet <laughs> in a really adorable way. So anyway, we've got this and it can also be worn by Zito so they can share their ornaments. Um, my favorite, this was inspired by a really cool silver brooch that Jason wore in one of his videos. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my God, that star necklace from Pincher Creek. <laughs> so I had bought this. It was originally a pendant on a necklace. Um, since I collect space looking jewelry, suns, moon, stars, shooting stars, uh, I had saved it for my personal journal, but when I saw the, the kind of cascading stars that Jason wore, and he made a specific point. Somebody watching that live asked him if he could, I don't know, like get close to the camera and stay still. And he had made a joke that some clever YouTuber is probably going to take a screenshot and make a ton of money off of it. Uh, but instead, some clever YouTuber took a mental note and <laughs> made a paper doll variation of it for him. So I just love this. I think it's so, so cool. Um, anyway, I just wanted him to have a fabulous assortment of jewelry in paper doll form, just as he does in real life form. And just in case he's worried about Zito exploring the pages of the book uh, unsupervised, I made a little leash. And the gems are... Iolite, when my beloved childhood cat Sneaky passed away, um, I read in the Book of Stones that wearing, carrying, or meditating with Iolite can help us be more receptive to messages from loved ones who have passed away. Look at how, <laughs> look at this. I didn't know that there was a magnet back there. I forgot there was a magnet back there. And Zito has like, he's already off to explore. Look at him. So cute. Stay with Jason. Aww. Anyway, I bought myself an Iolite pendant and it took a while, but um, after, you know, meditating with it for long enough, I, I truly, I had a beautiful dream that my cat Sneaky visited me and I, I believed it to be real and I still do believe it to be real and I don't usually talk about that kind of spiritual stuff, but I figured... Iolite is something that every everyone who loves and loses and grieves for uh, a non-human friend should have in their collection. And then sunstone, just because we often see sunstone and iolite forming together, it means, yeah, the same, different but the same, this world and the next. And... 
Jason's ring. This is a genuine Spessartine garnet chip and it's it's a teeny 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 tiny little miniature Spessartine um, and yet in the paper doll scale whoops to paper doll scale it looks enormous and isn't that wonderful yeah little heart brooch too so yeah these are just some pieces of junk jewelry that I've added magnets to so that Jason and Zito and the ladies who find him as a genie can wear I really like this one as a skirt decoration for this last lady here isn't that fabulous oh I just love these things so yeah that is I, I'm planning to do a whole separate little video just telling that story I'm not gonna read all of these anymore I think oh you know what I will the cliche dinner party question you can invite any 10 guests living or dead who would they be and let's just assume all doggies, kitties, and animal friends are guaranteed attendance, so you don't have to include them in the list. <laughs> ten, ten, which ten humans would you invite? What jewelry were you wearing when this book arrived? Hopefully he was wearing jewelry when this book arrived, otherwise that question will be irrelevant. What was the best and, adver what was the best and worst advice your teachers gave, and how has it affected you? And I'm thinking here... Uh, art school teachers specifically but they could be school teachers fantasy glam what's your dream outfit okay some of these are stretching it favorite ring you've made and I'm assuming this space here could be written on favorite gift you've received this cool vintage book page could be written on given meaning Favorite gift you've received, favorite gift you've given. Okay, I've got some funny stuff here. This was from a roll of music paper. And back at the turn of the last century, self-playing pianos would read the holes in these kind of like a music box and play a tune. And the words go bottom to top. And Jason's mother's name is Mary. I've seen her in the chats. And I just thought this was so hilarious. I did not tear this for you, Jason. This was already torn for a totally different book. But when I read the words, I thought it was so funny. You're driving me crazy. <laughs> Pretty Mary. <laughs> so there's for Jason's mom. These were just cool. A collection of King Tut's furniture. I felt like something of King Tut had to be in here since he is, after all, on the cover. This, I'm a little jealous, so I bought this for myself at a thrift shop. It's just super, super cool. Uh, it's a First Nations published um, book about the totem poles and house posts of the Sitka National Historical Park. And back when I lived in Vancouver to go to art school, I used to love visiting the totem poles in Stanley Park and... One of my art professors, Art Perry, had a really cool story that at that at the time of Andy Warhol, so I guess in like the 70s, 60s or 70s, maybe even the early 80s, um, my art teacher was a journalist for the Vancouver Sun, and he was tasked with the enviable job of meeting Andy Warhol for lunch at a local restaurant. Uh, to interview him for uh, for the paper because he had an upcoming museum exhibit coming up in Vancouver or gallery exhibit and at the end of their luncheon they had hit it off so well conversation was so flowing um, that Andy invited my history teacher Art to go with him to the now I forget what it's called but on the campus of the University of British Columbia, there's a museum specifically of First Nations, like specifically Coast Salish style art. So the, the art of the peoples who originally inhabited the Vancouver area. And Andy Warhol told my art teacher, do not include this in your, in your article. If people knew how fascinated I am with the anthropological art of the 
of you know of the coastal natives here and how much I love totem poles and how influenced I've been by the stylized red, white, and black prints of the Tlingit people um, and the Salish people, uh, he said that he would lose a lot of his mystique. Um, and his particular mystique was vapid, shallow commercialism. So it's interesting to contemplate on the fact that, you know, vapid commercialism could be mystique, whereas uh, finding inspiration in the ancient ancestral art of a distant people would be considered ordinary, but in the mind of Andy Warhol, that's how it was. Interesting, right? So anyway, I found this um, at, a, at a thrift shop. I found this in a jewelry jar, unrelated, but very, very cool. Maybe a Salish piece. I think it's sterling silver. It's signed. I don't know anything more about it other than I felt like pinning it to this book because they belong together. I was going to keep this for my own collection, but then I saw how good it looks when Jason is looking up at the totem pole. I'm not sure if you can tell this is embossed. It's 3D, so that's kind of like a real thing in paper doll world. And <laughs> so he can hang out and learn about all the different totem poles. So hopefully, hopefully you like this, Jason. If not, um, you're welcome to put whatever you like into this little pocket. This would be a great backdrop for a collage. So would be a counting book. I loved her fan. I loved her necklace and her earrings. And of course, that uh, look on her face. So she looks like she has something on her mind. Jason is the best listener I can imagine for her. Actually, I don't know. Jason, I assume you're a good listener because you're a wonderful speaker. And typically people who are good speakers become so because they are good at listening to others, in my humble opinion. Anyway, the artist looks at art. So we have this page that was the inside page of one of my cool ancient Egyptian art books. And I felt like that would be cool. Lots of good journaling space here too, 1962. And behind it, this amazing piece of art, as well as a little miniature print. I'm gonna put that there instead. Uh, with tigers, because Jason was born in the year of the tiger, I hope, otherwise <laughs> there's just random tigers. Um, I loved the way these looked together. This beautiful print, uh, of an original painting that was by my friend Kat Stone. She's actually gone in with fabric paint and added to the scarf and the earring and I just love it. It's stunning. And so I asked Kat if there's anything she'd like to share about this piece since I knew I would be including it in Jason's journal. Um, and I printed out our conversation from Instagram just because, oh, you know what, Kat, I hope this is okay. I'm sure it's okay. I asked her what would she like to share with it. So th none of this would be secret, even though it's private conversations. Um, but yeah, so basically, let's see. Uh, she said, I've painted portraits of some of the Winona Young River people depicted in this fantasy-like way. I entitled this Fat Tuesday Rio, referring to the celebration after Lent. So in a strange way, it's perfect for his book. So how fun is that? She also commented that they look beautiful together. Jason and Zito admiring that piece of art. So I'm just going to fold this up, Jason, in case you're interested in what Kat has to say about this beautiful work of art that she made. Let's see. And of course... If you choose to keep this piece of paper with the book, there's some good journaling space on the back of that. Um, but here, okay, so I would say this is second to the doll. This is the thing that I'm the most excited about in this book. Um, I made a little envelope for it and wrote a little something about what these are. So in a video once, um, Jason was asked by a viewer if money was no object, if he could collect 
anything, what would he collect? And you know, what, what has been something, you know, just out of his reach. And in that video, he said that enameled Lalique Art Nouveau brooches, um, I don't know if it's still the case, but he said at the time they were impossible to be had for any price. Like none of the collectors who own them were parting with them and that he would love to have them. And I'm the type, if I know somebody wants something, I want to find a way to give it to them, <laughs> whether I can or not, whether it's practical or not. And so I considered you know, making little tiny ones that could be worn by the paper doll. And then I thought, you know what? Why not? Oh, look, the heart. The heart stuck to him. So I'm going to leave it there. I thought, why not, instead of making miniature replicas, make some scale replicas? And so I had some fun uh, printing out and then painting over um Lalique brooches and, and you know cut fussy cutting them including cutting out the little details trying to imitate the opal as best I could and so I've made a set of six hand painted my version of Lalique brooches so yeah I had a lot of fun I used different shades of gold paint I kind of mixed my own shades of gold paint by adding more and less white to each. Um, I think they're so much fun. And I hope Jason likes them too. So it's kind of a funny little, if you can't buy a Lalik brooch, you know, if you don't have gold and opals, but you have paint and paper, here's what you can make. This one is one of my favorite. I, I posted these on Instagram today because I've been photographing everything before I ship the journal. I signed them all SL 2024. This one is my absolute favorite. It's the Medusa brooch. And the original has, I think it must be like poured glass or something. It has just beautiful, vibrant blue bubbles of color that just look, they look like actual tentacles and suction cups. And what I love about it is that it's kind of like Medusa meets sea monster or something. It's so cool. So this one, I actually added some rhinestones to it. And then I realized if I put rhinestones on all of them, it's going to add like an extra two inches to the thickness of the book. So I, I only did it on that one. Uh, but then best for last, my absolute favorite is this one here. It's like a Medusa headdress. Look at all the snakes. It was a little bit meticulous to paint. And mind you, I did not do a perfect job. I did kind of a sloppy job, but I still think it's just super, super fun. And it makes a stunning headdress for our Jason doll. Look at this. Is that gorgeous or what? So yeah, this... This was my favorite part. Um, it's, it's funny when working on a journal like this, because part of me wondered, should I send these separately so that if he doesn't want them in a book, uh, they could be framed and put on the wall or something. But you know what? He could still do that. <laughs> and um, I'm thinking I'm going to take these to a coffee shop tomorrow to get them each scanned before I send Jason the journal and that way prints can be made and that way, you know, he could put these somewhere else if he wants to and keep prints in their place in the book. But you know what? No, I think, I think they belong in the book, right? But it's, at least that way it gives a choice. I shouldn't say that. If I say that, they'll never leave the book. Jason, you do with them whatever you want. You'll see, I pinned another thing in here as a page decorator that I can't help but think he might prefer to take out of the book. For all of you who enjoy ASMR paper sounds, <laughs> this is just for you. And for those like me who are annoyed by it, I'm very sorry. But yeah, I used 
tracing paper for these, similarly to how I made tracing paper um, wardrobe envelopes for Cat Stone's paper doll clothes when I made them for her. Just to keep these protected because the paints will, um, they'll stick to each other and peel the paint off. And I've learned that the hard way. So this way in their parchment paper envelopes, they're all protected. So there we go. It's a set of six original hand-painted Lalique brooches to my best guess approximation of what real life scale size would be. Um, and I really hope you love it, Jason. I wrote here, what piece of jewelry instantly transforms you the moment you put it on? And this envelope could be a place to write the answer to that. Because he collects folk art. Look at the cool airplanes on this old airmail envelope. And inside it, some cool folk art stamps from India that I think are absolutely beautiful. Let's so just tuck into here. This pocket is holding some more fun random papers. <laughs> this is out of an old lapidary journal, so it's all about jewelry making, and it happened to have a cute little dog illustration. Starting to go a little bit more quickly because we've been here a while. This is there only because it looks so good with the Jason doll. He can have kind of like a halo of orange flowers. Um, some pretty pages with a Japanese theme. Blank on the inside so they can be written in. These were just printables, a really cool Buddhist one too. I try to include lots of space in these books for someone to actually write and that's hard to do sometimes when you're like me and you just want to make everything over the top decorated. How fun is this? This is a paper doll that I have that Cat Stone made. Um, and here she is wearing what I think looks like a 1960s space age Star Trek style bodysuit. I don't know what it's meant to be. I, I need to ask Cat, but I just see this as like the alien woman you encounter on an away mission on 1960s Star Trek. But this one for Jason's journal, because of course, of the cute little husky dogs. We're nearly at the end, my friend. This just looked like a Rockwell portrait, or a Rockwell kind of family scene painting, but I love the little puppies with the little girl. And it was labeled 1948. This was tucked into the back of a scrapbook that I bought. And I wrote creative goals, question mark, <laughs> in case you'd like to write there. I didn't write anything on this one because I noticed my black pen was coming through and I'd rather leave it so that he can write on it. Favorite fashion era, question mark. And I put some stickers here with like flapper-esque outfits that were a gift from Cat Stone. And these are actual vintage stickers. 1959 to 1966 on this original ledger, a page out of a reproduction of the Eaton's catalog from 1901. Of course, the fine jewelry page. These butterflies were from my friend May from Saudi Arabia. More of those fashion stickers. Yet another genuine Victorian calling card with an adorable little puppy indulgently allowing his little girl to dress him up just like a doll. I think the back of this card is just as cool to look at historically as the front. Tucked into a pocket made by what must be another variation of the river people. Really cool art. My, my friend Kat makes the most magical art. Pet peeves, <laughs> we all have them. This little cute violinist. Another original Victorian piece with another cute little doggy. And just some fun things that I've stacked together here. This is a page out of a vintage uh, magazine. And of course, I thought it would look really cool with the Jason doll. 
Where did Jason go? There he is. Hang out with these guys. So yeah, the, the fun thing about these paper dolls, I'd mentioned that uh, my boyfriend, Ken Lee, when I asked him if there was anything he wanted for Christmas, he asked me if I would make him a paper doll. And I've mentioned before how lucky I am to have, you know, uh, an amazing boyfriend who actually loves my art so much that his like ideal Christmas gift was a paper doll and a junk journal. Um, but what I've seen from Ken Lee playing with his, how cute, right? He plays with his paper doll. Uh, what I've seen him do when he plays with his is like he'll he'll have a book down so that the doll can explore the pages and sort of interact with the elements on the page. Um, and he's used those as kind of like slideshow imagery to go with the music that he's practicing and kind of just a, a fun hobby of his to make music and to use this paper doll in it. But I thought, yeah, Jason can do the same with his if he wants. You know, he can go anywhere in the world now because you just have to put him on, you know, visit any historic work of art. Galleries become irrelevant. You can just put him down in any art history book on any page there he is in ancient Egypt you know there he is in the jewelry of 1901 you know there he was on the streets of New York he and his little doggy even have a little child friend now you know if he wants to adopt a kid there he is a little a little dog loving boy so anyway yeah this was just a fun little thing I found in my garage my boyfriend's dad sells antiques and collectibles, and this little clown brooch looked like it has a story. So, Jason, you're welcome to take that off and use it elsewhere or, you know, rip things out and sell them if you want. Like, I don't consider this book to be finished. I consider it to be a work in progress, so you make it how you want it to be. Remember that um, page a million years ago that we looked at? Um that showed a tin soldier falling into a lake. And I said, I use that just because the thing on the other side I wanted, this was the thing on the other side, the wicked witch from the storybook with her skull and crossbones poison ring and the cool, cool embroidered fabric she's wearing and the wand. So one of the things I wish I could show you, but in my over preparedness, I've already wrapped it up in some star, moon and gummy bear paper i bought this wrapping paper side note when i was in junior high in the 1990s and i used it to wrap a gift for my friend julia and then i forgot about it and last week my mom pulled it out of her hutch and said hey i found your wrapping paper do you still want it and i looked at it and thought you found my wrapping paper from two moves ago like what so and it, perfect timing because jason has mentioned loving gummy bears so anyway i wrapped this up this is a magic wand my boyfriend kenley made for jason so he takes the wood that is native to where we are um cotton wood it grows by the old man river it's considered magical um he takes it he wraps it in pure copper wire and then he attaches natural gemstone and crystal beads and then um, kind of goes over it with polymer clay. He stamps into it with really cool designs. That's from a stamp seal um, from the pre-Vedic civilization of the Indus Valley. But yeah, so this is the one that Kenley made for himself. I just wanted to show it because it's stunningly gorgeous. Um, and he has a huge collection of these wands. His entire music room wall is covered in wands and he's got more of them lying around that he has copper wrapped waiting to have the crystals added. But anyway, yeah, when I was talking about making Jason a journal, um, Kenley heard Jason say in one of the videos that he had a crystal next to him for the energy and for the power and Kenley said, okay, he needs a wand. Um, so yeah, the one I wrapped up, it's the one Kenley picked for you specifically, Jason. So here, a little something, how do you and Jeremy spend an ideal day? Biggest disappointment that turned out to be a blessing. 
favorite prayer slash mantra. And yeah, this white space is where that could be written. The cat's prayer. This was in a happy mail from Cat Stone, and it's just beautiful. Um, trying to sell him on cats <laughs> as a dog lover himself. Um, there's my cat lover's propaganda. So I found this cute little booklet among things that I bought when I was in India. So I bought this at a temple souvenir shop. And it's just really beautiful because I, I wanted to send Jason one of the things from my travels in India. And I kind of grabbed this randomly deciding whether or not to pick it. And what's really cool is that um, Swami Chidananda has written about the, the importance of a connection with God by whatever name. And I think for a person who is both Hindu and Catholic, um, to have a book written by, sorry, not Hindu, Buddhist and Catholic, not Hindu. <laughs> I lean Hindu, personally. Um, but a, a book written by a Hindu to someone who is Catholic and Buddhist, <laughs> and how it kind of talks about the oneness between all of us. And it's neat how he ended his little essay here with we're a prayer written by American Indian people. Um, let's see, Yellow Lark of the Sioux people. So I'm not going to read it because it'll take forever, but if you want to pause and have a read, you're welcome to. So yeah, I thought that was cool. And Jason has talked about his connection to arrowheads and finding, oh, here, another another room in Versailles to explore. Um, if you were king of the world, comma, and then what would he do? In the king's chamber, of course. So yeah, just this page could be used for um, collage background. I put this as a tab because this was one of the pretty papers from Tanya. Um, this was in a Victorian scrapbook and I wasn't going to keep it. I had set it aside with things to recycle because as a vegan I didn't want to save something that shows a dead fox that shows fur uh, which I think of as murder. Not I think of which is murder. It's you know killing an animal just because you think it's fashionable to wear is not cool and never was. Um, but Fur aside, her dress, the flower, the, the leaves falling to the ground, the season, the composition of the piece looks really pretty. It is from a Victorian scrapbook, so it is historically antique. Um, in one video, Jason shared a piece of jewelry made out of an animal material, and he mentioned why it's important to keep it as a historic relic, not necessarily because he likes that material, but because it is a historic thing. So I thought, you know what, then here you go, Jason, <laughs> you get the fur picture. Because she is pretty, right? And she didn't know any better back then. Just some really cool Artemis piece with that amazing snake belt <laughs> and the little guy. I don't know what's going on in the scene. I am not a historian, but I do love to look at um, historic art antiquity. I've asked him to sketch a fantasy piece of jewelry, piece or pieces, just a doodle, just a rough little doodle on this gorgeous paper from Saudi Arabia. I coffee dyed it just so that it wouldn't look too white and boring and plain. This paper is also coffee dyed and I just asked him a couple more questions. If he was king of the world, what would he do as a previous page? So this page, if he was pope, what would he do? Um, and if he was a high school art teacher, what would he do? So just some fun hypo hypothetical thought experiments. Um, now this, this pendant was in a junk jewelry jar of all things. It's not signed, it's not stamped anywhere that I could see anyway. Um, maybe it is, now that I've been watching more Jason, I'm checking to see if it's stamped anywhere on the bail or the ring, it's not. Um, in fact, you know, the ring is not even soldered, so this could just be nothing. But anyway, to me, it sure looked, uh, to a layman's eye, like a brutalist piece. And so if it is, there you go. And if it's not, it's just something that looks kind of cool. 
And of course that could be, that does not need to live in the book. I, I almost sent that separately so it could be sold or whatever, but he, he could still sell it or whatever. Your call, Jason. Uh, more journaling space. Oh no, we've had a casualty. So yeah, this piece broke. It's an old postcard. I, I only included it because of the dogs and yet they're not really pets, they're guard dogs. So maybe that's less exciting, but yeah, that could be glued down somewhere to keep it intact. I'll just stick the pieces. I'm sorry, Jason, that a piece got broken. This is a collaboration. So Cat Stone made the bookmark and I went in with some fabric paint and drew a dragonfly. And just to be extra, I stuck peridots down the body of the dragonfly. So yeah, maybe write something sweet about Jeremy on that or have him write you something on that because peridot is his birthstone, as you like. Just some antique music paper in German, just because it's pretty. It looks really good in collages and it is antique. It's from 1890. Nice art history scene. A bluebird of happiness stick pin. <laughs> that stick pin was from Cat Stone, so thank you, Cat. And we are at the end, I promise. So I just clipped in some portraits of beautiful, fashionable women with their dogs. And there's one on both sides. That's why I couldn't glue it down. What's the best thing about being on YouTube? is what I'm asking him. This advertisement page from an old lapidary magazine about how to build a real gem library. Look, Jason, it's a list of books <laughs> to go search for. Um, but yeah, diamond cutting. I just thought this stuff looked really, really cool. And then this is the cover of a book that I found for a buck, $1 at the thrift store. Uh, my Kenley is actually using the book because he is determined to learn how to play music. Um, but I'm using the cover here just for something to tuck into the back of Jason's book that looks really cool. That, of course, his paper doll looks amazing exploring. There's even a little friend for Zito with a little beach ball. Um... Jason, I, I wish I had had pictures of every single one of your and Jeremy's pets from all time to include, but I tried to include enough illustrations of dogs in this book to symbolically represent every, every, every single tail wagging one that you've loved and lost and ever will love. I don't know. I, I feel like you're probably like me. When I was a little girl, somebody asked me, um, you know, do you love your kitty? And instead of answering, I said, I love every kitty who ever existed, who exists now, and who ever will exist. And I feel that that's you with dogs. So just represented here, all the dogs who exist, who have existed, whoever will exist, and all animals for that matter. So how do you want your life to have changed the world? Big question, I know. Saved it for the end. And what would you like future historians to note about your craft and your collection? A camera. <laughs> Snuck it in at the last page uh, because he mentioned enjoying photography. Just a fun little junk bead dangle. This thing that I pinned in was in a jewelry jar. It's one of the most beautiful vintage crystal buttons I've ever seen. Not a single crystal missing. Um, had to be for Jason. This was in the same jewelry jar as the little miniature Catholic reliquary and the little Buddhist coins. So I was like, okay, you know what? He collects vintage crystal buttons. That's it. This, I believe, was stamped uh, by Cat Stone. And it just sits in there like a tuck spot. You can really see the orange lining fabric on this page. So these are just fun pages out of a kid's book that I found thrifting. Um, it's all about stamp collecting. <laughs> so there you go, Jason. The one thing you don't collect, I've made a book dedicated all to it. 
Um, but I picked these pages because there's a cute puppy dog. There's a girl with cool jewelry. It's so of its era, right? Doesn't this look 80s or 70s? Um, and all the beetles because Jason has a wonderful collection of beetle jewelry. So yeah, these, these were just fun. And the dragonfly. These are just fun things to kind of put together at the last minute. Another Victorian piece, but with some biblical sayings. Wow. Okay, somebody is playing a joke on me. <laughs> Someone is, I didn't read this. I just ripped it out of a, a book because of the beautiful little puppy dog. But remember how I almost didn't include the page about those two forest gnomes or, or whatever they were, the dwarves? <laughs> well, yeah, there we go. And one more room of Versailles, just because it was stunning. And I love that Etruscan revival looking. Is that what this would be? Is this Etruscan or is this Phoenician? I don't want to call it something and display my ignorance, but whatever it is, it's a beautiful chair. Uh, from this picture, you wouldn't know how incredible these chairs are. So I appreciate the close-up. I loved it. I thought... Jason would probably get a kick out of this too. It's the covers from, the colors from the cover of his book uh, with that beautiful orange in the carpet. Anyway, I promise we were at the end. I will make this the end. <laughs> I'll put everything back into the book and back together off camera, which I very, very rarely do. But I believe one hour and 40 minutes is enough of a marathon video. Like, if this were a Hollywood movie, the credits would be rolling right now. Um, anyway, Jason, I just think you're wonderful. Kenley and I both adore your videos. I love you so much. I'm so grateful for everything you're doing um, to educate all of us about jewelry, about art, about the creative process, about what it is to be a collector, um, your channel is a window into a world that many of us admire from afar but would not otherwise get to experience, which is the world of fine jewelry collecting. So thank you for that. Welcome to another world of art book collecting. Um, I'll end the video with something Kenley said when I showed him this journal. Uh, for Jason, and he said, no collector's collection is complete without a journal by Sarah. <laughs> so if that can stick, that would be great. But if not, I just hope that this book brought you a big, huge smile, Jason, because you absolutely more than deserve it. Oh, look, I forgot this. Okay, the signature where it's all sewn together. I found a funny little robot made of buttons. And the first time Jason did an interview with Tanya, he said he dressed up as a robot at the end. A little inside joke between the two of them. Um, so when I found this, I knew it had to be tied in too. So yeah, your doll has a little robot buddy as well as a little doggy buddy. So there we go. Um, anybody who watched this all the way to the very end, thank you so, so, so much for sticking with me for all this time. I know your time is valuable and precious, so I'm grateful you chose to spend it looking at what I've made and talking to me. This little rose brooch. There, there were things I didn't even point out because time wouldn't have permitted. Um, like this fabric here was also from Tanya, for example, which is why it had to be uh, the Jason Genie Page fabric. Um, anyway, yeah, like I said, I'll get all this back together off camera, but in the meantime, happy crafting, happy journaling if you're a journaler. So, so, so much love to you. Bye for now.